This morning, I had a couple dreams in which Satan showed me my old life, tempting me with the things of my old life, old friends, old places that I could live, old things that I could do. In one of my dreams, I was buying a house in the old town where I used to live, where the Lord showed me it's like Sodom and Gomorrah. In another dream, I was driving with the whole family and I was passing through an old camp that I used to go to with the junior high kids. And when my children saw the camp, it looked like Disneyland to them. It looked beautiful. And I just knew that it was all of Satan because the devil tries to allure us back to old ways of the world, old sins, to try to tempt us and make us fall back into those old sins so that we no longer can stand in the truth with the Lord, but we just have the dirt of the world on us. When I was first coming out of church and trying to leave, one thing people would always tell me is, you can't leave behind old friends. You can't leave behind the church. It would be abandoning them. And I started noticing that the devil has this lie that you have to be salt and light for the devil. You have to go where the devil tells you so that you can be salt and light to his people. The trick here is, whenever the devil hears your salt and light, he smiles and pretends to be listening. But the gospel continually falls on dead ears because the devil knows he's never going to come to the Lord. But he can waste all your time and all your energy taking up your salt and light so that you don't share it anywhere else. The devil says, come here, give me your salt and your light. We have plenty of people that need your salt and your light. And then you take all your salt and you dump it on the dunghill. The manure pile does not need our salt. Food needs salt. Things that need to be preserved need salt. But the manure pile does not need salt. We need to come out of what is sinful and evil and perverted. Leave behind old friends. Leave behind the old towns and the old places that cause us to sin and cause us to stumble. We have to flee Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember when Lot and his wife left. His wife turned around to look back, longingly, wanting those old friends, wanting the old house. Remember what happened to her. She turned into a pillar of salt. She died that moment. We need to be as the children of God who fix our eyes on the Lord and walk straight out of Sodom and Gomorrah, never turning back, never listening to the devil saying, Oh, come back, be salt and light for me. Remember, remember what is written in Corinthians, this is chapter 15, verse 33 and 34. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. It is so true that evil company corrupts good habits or good morals. So many people think, but the whole church, it's like a hospital, and we are like doctors fixing them, helping people. And if we don't stay in church, how can we help people? Well, evil company corrupts good habits. And when Jesus calls you out of that bad company, you have to leave. You cannot fix people. God is the physician. Jesus Christ is the one who heals people, not you, not me. We are the sheep. And we need to follow him right on out of Sodom and Gomorrah. We can't fix those people. We have to be holding on to Jesus, following him for ourselves, and then listening to whatever he tells us to do. And then we can be salt and light to the world. But not when we're doing things our own way, living in Sodom and Gomorrah, listening to the devil's lies, thinking that we can throw salt on the dunghill and be salt and light for Satan. It will never happen. I want to read to you also what the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 when he was speaking to the Corinthians on this matter. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. 
Now in return for the same I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Jesus never taught us to stay in the whorehouse. He did not teach us to stay amongst those who sin and pervert our life and pervert the lives of our family members. He calls us to come out from what is sinful, to come out from the Babylon church, to come out from her. Then we can follow the Lord in holiness. But if you stay in the harlot church system, if you continue to think you're going to be salt and light there, the devil will take all your salt and all your light. He will trample on anything you try to do. And any light and truth that you do have, it will be thrown to the pigs. Jesus said that we should not throw our pearls to swine, otherwise they will trample all over us. In Revelation chapter 18, the same thing is recorded. I want to read it for you. This is starting in verse 1 of chapter 18. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he and he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. If we do not come out of the harlot church system, then the judgments that are coming on the wicked church will also come on us and our family. If we do not come out and stop offering our worship there to God, then people will see all of our worship to God as just the worship to that false church system. We will enhance the lies in church. Even if in our heart we're worshiping God, we will enhance the deception in church because the church is not glorifying God. They have false worship, false praise. We in our hearts may be worshiping the Lord. We may be playing piano. We may be singing, playing guitar. And there are some people in church that are really singing and playing for the Lord. But if you start to see the deception and know the truth, you will just become part of the deception. And even though you're praising the Lord, you will enhance that deception. People will say, see, she is not a false prophet. There are people here really worshiping the Lord, really praising God. How can she be false? No, Jesus calls us to come out of her, to be separate, to offer our worship in a holy and pure manner, that we also may not glorify what is sinful or make it seem like what is dead is still alive. Come out and be separate from what is ungodly. Be separate that we may worship the Lord in all holiness and all purity. Be separate so the judgments of God do not come upon you and your family that are coming upon the wicked whorehouse, Babylon the Great, the church that is fallen and full of demons. 
May the grace of Jesus be with you.